What is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having an amazing day. Now, over the past few weeks, I've read some pretty awful stories on here. I'm going to be honest. Now look, don't get me wrong. I know you guys love the drama, but sometimes it can be a bit too much. It can be a bit too negative. So today I've got for you the most wholesome story I've read on Reddit for a long time. Sit back, relax, drop a like on this video and subscribe if you're new to the channel and prepare for a wholesome overload. My husband doesn't know that I know what he's up to. This was originally posted on February 26th of this year. I am a 33 year old woman. My husband is 34. We had our first baby back in June of last year. My husband's aunt gifted our son a lovely chunky knitted blanket. The blanket is so soft and I have made multiple comments about how I would like to find a full size blanket just like it because it's so cozy and I'm kind of jealous of my baby. Well, this past weekend, my husband snuck off to the store. He refused to tell me where he was going and why, but I later found a plastic bag with the logo of a local crafting store. That evening, my husband stated that he would like to have an hour of alone time every night after our son goes to sleep. He stressed that he would not like to be disturbed, but if I needed him, then I could call or text him. I agreed to this because we're both adjusting to having very little me time since the birth of our son. Last night during his alone time, our son started crying. I checked the baby monitor and saw that he had simply lost his pacifier and was going back to sleep. However, the baby monitor also shows part of our son's room, not just his crib. In the corner of his room, I saw my husband sitting on the floor with a bunch of chunky yarn in front of him. I turned the volume up and I heard that he was watching a YouTube video on how to finger knit. This sweet man is making me a blanket. He absolutely loves surprising me, but is terrible at keeping secrets. I just know that he is going to slip up and accidentally mention something about the blanket at some point. I plan on acting clueless so that I'll still be surprised when he gives it to me. I just love him so much and I'm so delighted that he's learning a new skill so that I can have a custom blanket. Well, that is the most wholesome post I've ever read. Let's get into some comments. Somebody said, oh my goodness, the title makes this sound like it could have been something else, but it's so cute. Also, why do men seem to always forget about the baby monitor? Yeah, I agree. The title saying my husband doesn't know that I know what he's up to. OP's done that on purpose. Very good. Someone else replied saying because he isn't actually being deceptive. If anything, he's allowed her to know that he isn't up to anything by being in the view of the baby monitor. He's being very transparent about this surprise gift. And I love this for OP. It's something I will steal and do for my partner when we have kids. OP then replied. So he just came home from work and mentioned his alone time again. To keep up the facade, I asked him what he'd be doing during that time. And he said, just working on some stuff. Since he's so terrible at keeping surprises, he always tells me, I have something planned, but I can't tell you what it is. And then we do this back and forth where I ask about it and he refuses to tell me. So for the sake of his surprise to me, I will keep occasionally asking him what he's up to during his alone time. On to another comment. Someone said, thank you for this lovely post and sweet story that is restoring some of my faith in marriage and humanity today. Please, please, please don't let me come back in several weeks to an update that he used the blanket to pay off a gambling debt, gave it to his best friend's ex for her birthday, or made it into a furry suit for himself. Reddit has been absolutely unhinged the past few months. I completely agree. On the one hand, this is a great post and is super wholesome, but also in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about all the truly awful stories I've read on here and thinking, please, don't let it come to something like that. OP replied, if he managed to knit himself a furry suit, I wouldn't even be mad. I'd just be wildly impressed that he had such talent. And finally, before we get into the update, someone commented, what a sweet, lovely partner. Mine can't keep a secret either. And I love giving the validation of surprise and enthusiasm when they present the final piece to me. Just wonderful. OP says, if you ask my husband, he would tell you he's very good at surprising me, but little does he know he's actually very obvious whenever he's planning something. I'm rarely surprised, but I always act like I am. Okay, and then just a couple of weeks ago on March the 13th, we got the update. So again, the brief backstory here. I posted recently, says OP, about how I checked the baby monitor while my son was sleeping, saw my husband sitting on the floor, finger knitting a blanket for me after I made a comment about how I wanted a chunky blanket. My sweet husband broke. He kept on mentioning that he was working on a surprise for me. I would occasionally ask what this mysterious project was, and he would get a cheeky smile and say, I can't tell you. 
That eventually evolved into him repeatedly telling me that keeping the surprise was really hard and he just wanted to tell me. I kept then saying, no, you've kept it a surprise for this long. You can keep going. But one day after dinner, he decided that he couldn't keep it in anymore. He showed it to me. It was only about a quarter done, but it was lovely. The arm was really soft and was my favorite color. I could tell that he'd taken his time because of the consistency of all the loops. Even unfinished, it was perfect. He told me that he kept moving it around to different hiding spots, but that since our house is very small, it was only a matter of time before I accidentally found it. He said he'd run out of yarn and asked if I wanted to pick out another color to add to it. I said yes, and we made a little date out of it. We grabbed lunch and then walked around the craft store before I picked out a complimentary color to the one he chose. He hasn't had much time to work on it the last few days, but he assured me it will be finished by my birthday. I'll post a picture of the blanket when finished. For now, I am wildly impressed with how long he kept it a secret and I'm so excited to have my first ever handmade blanket. Okay, so there we go. Let's end with a couple of top comments. Someone said, oh my gosh, I was ready for another unhappy story, but this is the sweetest thing I've read on this sub. What a sweet, sweet man. Someone else said, as a crocheter, if he does not finish before your birthday, whether that is next week or in five months, tell him that's totally normal. It's like a rite of crochet passage that gifts are not delivered on or before the intended event. We also need photos. Photos. So there we have it. Without a doubt, one of the most wholesome posts of all time. Even towards the end of that, I was still thinking back in my mind, please, can this not go wrong? I mean, it's on r slash best of Redditor updates. And most of the time, the updates aren't good. But thankfully, we got away with one there. That was just great from start to finish. I will say as well, on behalf of your husband, OP, that, that the surprise was still a thing because... You know, finding out what you were doing on the baby monitor was the surprise in and of itself. And the fact is, it would have taken ages to finish and it would have been a while until you had the present eventually. Now you have the excitement of knowing what he's doing, knowing that he's still spending loads of time on a present for you. But then you can also get involved and, you know, as you said, go and pick up some colors, make it perfect for yourself. And um, yeah, it's just a great thing to kind of now do together, I guess, even though he's still doing it but you know what's going on. Now, that is going to do it for the first story of this episode, but um, there is time for another one. And I'm going to be honest, that was a bit too wholesome. Time to bring things back to reality. I'm your wife, not your mum. My 32-year-old wife always says this to me, a 34-year-old man, and I don't know how to respond. How can I make her see my side? This was originally posted on February 26th, 2024. That's right, the same day of the first post. Hey, everyone. So my wife and I have been together for 18 years, but have been arguing recently about the responsibilities within our marriage and we can't seem to agree. I work full time and my wife is a stay at home mother. We have two children. One is in school full time and the other goes to preschool two and a half days a week. Recently, my wife has been sending me the stupid TikToks that always say your wife is your partner, not your mum," and essentially boils down to men should help out around the house help with the kids and pick up after themselves. A sentiment that I generally agree with. This usually comes with a side of, you don't value what I do, look after the kids and plan everything, etc. Now, to be clear, I'm not against helping out around the house and helping get the kids to bed and brush their teeth and cook meals. I help with this stuff every day. I feel like all I do though is work because the second I finish my actual work, I have kids to help with because she's had them all day. My position is that she is right when she says that kids are work and I can appreciate that after a day of being with them all day, she is probably tired of them. But I've also been at work all day too and it isn't fair to expect me to be the sole parent as soon as I'm finished. Then there is the issue of housework. Our house is always a mess, which frustrates me when she complains about having to do all the unpaid labor of managing a household and looking after the kids. From my perspective, I go to work in a messy house and I finish work in a messy house. I work from home. I go into my office for eight hours, only coming out for the occasional coffee and snack. This means that 90% of my mess is contained to a room only I go in. Most days while I'm at work, she isn't even home. I feel that I am holding up my end of the bargain by working full time and then helping with housework and the kids outside of that but she isn't holding up her end of it by looking after the house and kids while I'm at work. 
I could understand that she wouldn't get as much done around the house on days when our youngest is home, but on days where she is at preschool, she takes it as an opportunity to have a break and go shopping with her mum or go and visit a friend. Whenever I bring this up or question how much effort she is putting in, I get, you don't appreciate me and I'm not your mother. I'm not saying she should be waiting on me hand and foot as my personal maid, cook and sex doll, not that we ever have sex, because I'm the man bringing home the bacon and I really hope I don't come across that way in this post as that really is not what I'm saying. But I'm killing myself trying to do everything yet I'm being told that I'm the problem for treating her like my mother because I'm expecting her to do her part. What can I do to help her see my side? Okay, interesting start to this one. And of course, as always, there is an update to come. I would have to say though, off the bat, that this is all caveated with with the fact that we're only getting obviously the husband's side op side of the story and i think we would need to hear from from his wife as well so we can balance out the two viewpoints i think that the, the easy way to solve this or just to understand who is doing more and who should be doing more is perhaps just do it on like general effort level and time spent doing things for your husband for op there's no way that he has the time to go shopping with his mum or do other you know, leisure activities that he'd want to do by the sounds of it. So if his wife is able to do those things, I would argue that that is not fair. I mean, doing that in the middle of the day. If you're both putting in the same amount of effort, forget money because you have your agreement on, on who is actually making money for the house. The unpaid labor bit is a bit weird because again, obviously it's unpaid. That's what the agreement you have is. Then I think as long as you guys are putting in the same amount of effort, then that should be fine. But it sounds to me like you're not, which isn't fine. I also don't think the OP is coming across as saying that oh, because I make the money, I don't have to do housework or look after the kids. I don't actually think for one second he's saying that. Um, he's just saying that he doesn't want to come home and then do all the work of the house after work, which would normally be, you know, for both partners, because your wife's been with them the entire day, the kids, that is, and doing housework. Realistically, if you both went off to work, then both came back, you both have to split that, that housework and looking after the kids anyway. So her being at home in the day and doing that stuff doesn't take away from the fact that she still needs to do it in the evenings when you're available as well even though i kind of get her point that she's been doing it all day i don't know it's a tough one get your comments in down below but let's get into the update and see what happened okay so on the same post this was the update titled yes i help so a lot of people are saying we need to sit down and try to look at things as a team and i'm totally on board for this approach and i'll let you know how that goes also to a few people who dislike my framing of helping saying it's my responsibility also yes i agree and I use the term helping as that's the word that she uses when saying I need to do more to help around the house. Another lot of you either can't read or are refusing to believe that I actually parent my own children. I wake them up in the morning. I make them breakfast every day. I get them dressed every day. I take them to school two to three days a week. I know their teachers. I know all their friends and their friends' parents' names. I know their doctors. I know their allergies. None, thankfully. I bath them. I get their PJs on. I read them the same goddamn bedtime story every night for weeks because they don't want any of the other books we have. They want George the Giant. I draw with them. I play games with them. I know their favorite Disney princesses and favorite superheroes. As for the household, I do laundry. I load the dishwasher. I cook my own lunches. I tidy up after myself. I iron. I fold. I put away laundry. I pick up their toys and I tidy their playroom. I hoover at the weekend. I take them to kids parties. I also do all the chores that my wife won't because I'm the man, like taking out the bins, cleaning the car, mowing the grass, fixing anything that breaks. Okay, interesting stuff there from OP. To be honest, it sounds like he is doing a lot. Now there is actually another update, again posted a few days later after the talk. So I arranged for the in-laws to have the kids Friday night. Me and the wife sat down and had a talk, a long talk. Probably one of the deepest and hardest talks we've ever had in our 18 years. I told her my side, that I felt overwhelmed and underappreciated, that I felt I was doing more than my fair share and that she wasn't. I told her that I could understand that while I may be doing plenty around the house and parenting, that I was guilty of letting her take the majority of the mental load, but that still didn't excuse her behavior. I felt I was firm but fair, and to her credit, instead of fighting back, she listened. We discussed her feelings and she admits to not prioritizing housework and trying to make the most of her free time and agreed that we will sit down and come up with a schedule for cleaning that we are both accountable for. She told me some issues that I wasn't aware of that her mother had been dealing with since retiring and the passing of her father, my wife's granddad. 
loneliness and depression issues relating to my sister-in-law she's a mess and constant headache which was why she'd been going to see her so much other feelings she'd been having about feeling lost in kids not having anything for herself and some depression related to weight gain since having our second child she's put on about 40 to 50 pounds and no longer feels attractive i told her that i still think she's beautiful but she doesn't hence our dead bedroom there were hurt feelings and tears from both of us so we're taking steps to help one we both agree to switch out mornings and evenings i get the kids up breakfast teeth dressed and take them to school she does dinner bath bed etc the next day we switch this gives us both some mornings and evenings free to do what we want two we're both joining the gym i too have put on some weights and lost muscle since our second child Hopefully this helps with her body confidence. Three, we're also arranging with the in-laws to have babysitters once a week for us to start going on regular dates again. For context, the in-laws are our only support. I'm an orphan of abusive parents raised by my grandmother, now past. Four, we've found a cleaning schedule where you do certain chores throughout the house every day, but pick one room to deep clean every day too. With me doing laundry, dishwasher, etc., things that take less time, her doing the deep cleans and general tidying. And five, most importantly, she is looking to get a job part-time so she can start helping financially, give her some income that isn't from me, and give her something to focus on outside of being a mum. As all my wages went into the joint account, I felt like I never had any money, as I didn't want to spend and there not be enough to pay the mortgage, etc., so I never spent money and I resented that she did. So when she gets a job, both incomes are going into the joint account. Then we're getting a budget together, making sure there is enough to cover direct debits, then dividing the remaining into accounts for savings and personal accounts for each of us to have our own money that we can spend how we want guilt-free. And six, I'm going to pick up a hobby that gets me out of the house and commute to the office once a week. One thing we discussed was that I was always at home. I didn't do anything other than work and be at home so we didn't have a lot to talk about because I didn't go anywhere. It also meant that she never got any alone time at home away from me and the kids, and she felt like a nuisance being at home while I'm at work. That actually makes a lot of sense. We took this weekend to spend some time together as a family. We took the kids to the park, went to a nature reserve for a picnic and bike rides, took the kids rock climbing, followed by ice cream. It was really nice, and we both feel like a weight has been lifted. It's obviously not gonna change overnight, and we need to work at it, but we have a plan and both seem to want to put in the effort. To everyone who gave me good advice, recommended therapy, we can't afford it until she starts work, but we're looking for when she does, commiserated with your own stories or just had a kind word to say, thank you so much. There were comments that made me cry and so much insight that I hadn't considered. Thank you. To those of you who clearly didn't read my post, but instead assumed I was entitled and entirely to blame because I used the word help, or that I probably didn't know my own children's birthdays and allergies, I feel sorry for you. And I hope that you get the help that you so sorely need. Well, there we go. That is the end of the second post. Did I fool you? Because actually there were two extremely wholesome stories. Now the first one, yes, was just pure wholesome. But the second one is a good outcome. That is what you want to see as well. Nothing rash, no divorce, nothing crazy. No, oh my God, I'm leaving you and taking the kids and you're never going to see them again, you clown. No, working through it as any good couple should respect to op and his wife i mean that is just what you got to do every time isn't it maybe it's easier said than done but having a proper sit down listening to one another you know saying what you want to say but also being courteous and understanding what the other person is saying as well and then putting a plan in place both saying and doing what you what you said you're going to do like putting the effort in as well and sticking to the plan and then yeah i see no way in which this isn't going to result in a great outcome there are a few things that you've done instantly that I think are going to be better. Like your wife getting a part-time job, you getting out of the house a little bit more, doing more stuff together on the weekends, you know, having a, a day off as well, sending the kids to your in-laws for a night each week. Those are all great things. And then the other stuff that you said as well, yeah, see how it goes. It also sounds sounds great to me. So respect for, for not doing anything crazy and just putting a solid plan in place, which is going to really improve your lives. And guys, if you'd like to improve your life, then check out the sponsor of today's video, my subscribe button. Uh, it's down here. Thank you very much to my subscribe button for sponsoring this one, uh, really helping keep the channel afloat. You can help out as well by clicking it. That's all you got to do. It's completely for free. Uh, there's a sign up offer as well if you want to continue, but for now it's completely free. Um, so just click it and click subscribe and you'll be notified every day when I post a new episode.